The cost of the Snake Eye deck is extremely frustrating, but what if I told you there was a budget version of the deck that not only has similar combo lines, but it makes the cost of the deck go from this to this. What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Cards and Coffee where today I have my budget Fire King Snake Eye deck. I'm not lying when I say the cost of this deck is around $200 and while this still isn't in everyone's budget, when you compare it to the full price of the full power deck, it's way more reasonable to afford. But first, before we jump into all that, make sure you grab yourself a cup of coffee or something that way you guys can sit down and tune in. So right off the bat, how are we saving all this money? I think it's pretty obvious. We're going to be cutting the bonfires, the wanteds, and of course the Diabelle stars. You might be asking yourself, how does this deck even function without those? They're such good consistency cards and extenders as well. Trust me, I know the cards are amazing and that's why they're so expensive. But similar budget lists have recently topped other regionals. So trust me when I say these decks are good enough to compete with the meta. So hopping right into it for our Fire Kings. Of course, we're playing the one Grunix, one Ponix, one Arvada, and I'm still playing three copies of Kieran. There are some builds that only play two Kieran, but we need as much extenders now that we don't have the wanted package. Plus, with our Snake Eyes, we really want all the help we can get to dodge Imperm. And speaking of the Snake Eyes, for our lineup, we are playing three copies of Ash, two Poplar, one Oak, and one Flamberg, just like the full power variants you see running around now. Now that we don't have Bonfire and, of course, the Witches, it's a lot less likely that you're able to get access to Ash. But to mitigate that problem, now we're playing three copies of Parallel Exceed. Not only is this card just an amazing extender, and OTK Enabler, but it gets you access to Infernal Flame Banshee, which is essentially a bonfire on legs for this deck. It is so good, not only at playing through hand traps, but helping your consistency of the deck as well. You could also play stuff like Where Art Thou, and spoilers, I'm not, but I just felt like without the wanted package and of course the bonfires, seeing level ones on the field isn't always guaranteed. It definitely helps when your Ash gets imperm, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. But speaking of the spells, of course, we're playing two copies of Original Sinful Spoils instead of one. Since we don't have the wanteds to recycle this card, it definitely helps having it in deck for the follow-up on the next turn. In addition, we're also opting to run the field spell, especially since we play multiples of the original. Now if we open it, we have another target in the deck that we'd like to search. I know it sounds a little contradictory, especially since we're playing two Fire King Island, but there's a lot of combos that the field spell really helps you play through hand traps. And once you put up something like an Appaloosa and you don't care about Nib anymore, then you can start activating Fire King Island. There's also some lines where you can spin the Fire King Island back into the deck, but we'll talk about that when we get to the extra. But the last Fire King spell, it's the one Fire King Sanctuary. I really want to play Circle because it's just another great target to search in the deck, especially since we're playing multiple islands. It's nice to have a secondary target to search. But rather than running the Circle, I'm actually opting to run the Monster Reborn, just because more times than not, it's a lot stronger than the Circle, even though you can't search it in the deck. Again, maybe you should add it as well. This deck does need all the extenders it can get, which is why we're also playing the one copy of One for One. Like I've said, all the extenders in the world help and the consistency is definitely needed. That's also another reason why I've opted to run multiple Fire King Islands, just because you need all the extension and consistency that you can get your hands on. Oh, and as a little disclaimer, like I said, you can get this entire deck, extra deck included, for $200, but pardon some of the rarities that I'm playing. I don't have access to the lowest rarity of some of these cards, but again, when you go to pick up these cards at the lowest rarity, it is so easy to get it down to $200. Talents is such a powerhouse this format, and there's really no need to explain it, but in this deck, in particular, I definitely think it's needed. You need all the bombs this deck can afford, whether it's stealing the monsters to extend or ripping a hand trap out of your opponent's hand so that way you can play, or heck, maybe you're down bad and you just need to draw two. This card does so much for the deck and that's why I think you have to play at least two. But again, ignore the rarities. This deck is super affordable. Another amazing thing about this deck is you have so much space for hand traps. We're actually opting to run 14. And if you feel like that's too much, then obviously you could start cutting them for more extenders like the Where Art Thou or something like the Fire King Circle. But in this case, for our hand trap lineup, we have the three Nib, we have three Valor, we have three copies of Ash. I'm opting to run two copies of Mourner and three copies of Impermanence. Again, pardon the rarities, but I just think hand traps are so important right now. Plus, now that we're playing Parallel Exceed, any of these normal summonable hand traps can convert into full combo, but that's a solid 40. And again, you have so much room to mess with things because the other cards we talked about really aren't that expensive. Again, if you have access to the Bonfires and the Wanted package, obviously, 
obviously those cards are just generically better for your deck, but by saving yourself $800, I definitely think it's worth it. Now before we hop into the extra deck, I actually just wanted to showcase these amazing SP Little Knight sleeves. Obviously we can't afford this in our extra deck for our budget, but these Imperium Duelist sleeves are so amazing, and if you want to get your hands on them as well, make sure you check out the link down below. We're also currently using these over sleeves, which obviously is in theme for the Year of the Fire. Since this build's going to save you a bunch of money, you might as well use the link down below and go get yourself something nice. Plus, to keep it the theme of saving money, don't forget to use my code COFFEE10 at checkout. Not only will that save you 10% off your entire order, but a portion of that purchase comes back to the channel and it helps me make content for you. Like I said, these are beautiful SP Little Nice sleeves, but unfortunately we don't play it in our extra. We'll talk about what we added in a sec, but the first monster in our extra deck is the Infernal Flame Banshee. This is a generic rank 4 that can detach a material to add a pyro monster to your hand. You could also send it from deck to graveyard, so maybe if you got hit with some hand traps, you might want to send something like your Ash or Oak to grave and then use something like your Monster Reborn. It also has the effect that whenever it's banished, if you control a pyro, you can special summon it back to the field, and this normally comes up specifically with SP Little Knight. Again, we're not playing that card, but to help us trigger those parallel exceeds, we have the Link Rebo to link off our level 1s, and then of course, you could summon the exceed from hand. Another thing I'm doing is playing the Almirage. That way you can convert the hand traps like Ash and Ghost Mourner into a Link Monster to trigger the Parallel Exceed. Since it's a fire, worst case scenario, you could always convert one of your hand traps into a fire to make your Fire King Island live. Also, when you pair it with Masquerina, that's technically another way to get into your Heat Soul. It doesn't always come up, but it's definitely awesome that we have that option. But just like all the other fire decks, we're playing the Dark Charmer and the Fire Charmer as well. Again, just amazing extenders in this matchup. Plus, technically, now you can take your opponent's Witch, even though you don't have one, and you can use its effect to set one of the originals from your deck. I'm telling you, why spend all that money on these packages when you can just use your opponents? But after that, we also have the Nightmare Phoenix. I personally feel like in all these fire decks, it's actually a staple card. Obviously, this can trade with Imperm and out anti-spell post side, but the main reason I think you have to play this card is if your opponent has no monsters on the field, with this card, you can still do the Zelantis OTK, even though they're not going to bring back bodies to their field for your princess to pop. The line's pretty well known now. Now, but we're also playing the Sunlight Wolf in the Fire King variant specifically. It's so nice to be able to recycle Kirin. Like I mentioned, we also have the Heat Soul to draw cards and set up Appaloosa as well. In this variant, I'm only playing one copy of Promethean Princess. Obviously, it saves you some money, but also I needed to make room for the Almirage. And I'm sure you guys have already guessed it. We're not playing SP, so instead we're playing Nightmare Unicorn. This just gives you another option of something to tag into with Masquerina, and it's a great board breaker as well when playing into a field. But like I mentioned, there are some combos you have to use your Fire King Island early so by being able to spin the fire king island back into your deck with unicorn not triggering the board wipe effect and then being able to play from there really makes for an amazing combo that this deck can do that way if you had access to the snake eyes field spell you can activate it freely without having to wipe your whole field after the combo but to round off our extra deck of course we're playing the appaloosa we're playing the one ambla whale we have the raging phoenix and like i mentioned the zelantis to otk this extra deck has all the tools available for this deck and while this deck has inherently lost some of the consistency, that power and utility is still there. So that's going to wrap things up for today's video. Thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate all the support. If you're on a budget as well, hopefully this build can help you. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And here's hoping to see you on the next one. Peace.